The other bias I have is I don't think our schools are failing. This is American, uh, I'm sorry, I want to go back one. Uh, American schools are the bottom line here. American schools are getting better. Last year, we graduated for the fifth year in a row a higher percentage of kids than the previous year. We are now graduating a higher percentage of our young people than ever in our nation's history, and they have more standards to take and tests to take than a decade ago God thought could be created. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they're not failing schools. The problem is the world outside of school, pushed by technology, pushed by globalization, is changing four to five times faster than the rate of change inside of school. And we have this interesting paradox. Our schools are getting better every year, but our kids are actually worse off. Not because schools failed, but because schools are simply getting marginally better at what they used to do. And it may be time for a quantum leap here. We may have to figure out that what we don't need to do is refine the 20th century system. We really got to get on with a 21st century education system. But how do you do that? With that challenge, five years ago, I accepted the chairmanship of a national commission. I'm the president and CEO of a group called the International Center for Leadership and Education. The second group, a group called the Council of Chief State School Officers. Every state in America has either a state commissioner of education, a state director of education, or a state superintendent. The 50, or 50 of them are called the Council of Chief State School Officers. That group and my group were jointly approached by a group of the nation's governors and corporate leaders, and we were asked if we would go out across America and try to find the schools that did not look like the bottom line, but instead looked like this line, or preferably this line. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gave us very, very substantial resources to do the research. It has been a five-year study. We will be releasing this study this spring. I'm going to give you a snapshot this afternoon of what we're finding because I think the message is really important. Message number one, how many in the room are classroom teachers? Let me be very clear. Nation's most rapidly improving schools. The teachers are not working harder than the teachers in the other schools in this country. You're not going to solve it by working harder. In fact, I would suggest to you that most teachers in America, because we got so many standards we're trying to cover, that in most schools in America, the kids are coming to school to watch their teachers work. Okay? <laughs> now, don't confuse that with learning. <laughs> learning is an active process. Nation's most rapidly improving schools, the role of teaching changes. They become much more facilitators. Facilitators of the learning process. And if we understand the 21st century learner, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be a facilitator of the 21st century learner unless you are using deep applications of technology. It cannot be people intensive in the 21st century. It's got to be far more technology intensive. Still, a teacher's an important role, but it's not figuring out how to use technology to make the teacher more successful in the ways in which they used to teach. It's helping teachers figure out how to make the technology more functional with a 21st century learner. It's a fundamental, subtle but fundamental difference we find in these schools. We have found these schools, we've analyzed them. As we've analyzed them, we've learned one other thing. Today's kids are different. Today's kids are natives to a technological world. So before I take you down a little trail here of what we found in these schools, I thought I would remind you what kids used to be like. <laughs> and the best way to know how to do that is to take you back to Art Linkletter. Yeah. Kids say, Who's the boss in your house, your mother or your dad? No, both of them. Hey, you're a diplomat, are you? No, I'm a Catholic Baptist. <laughs> Whatever that means. Now, 
let me introduce you to a young girl that can teach you a lot. Although some of you probably have already learned this lesson. Roxanne Burns, what's your favorite Bible story? About the wine. Where? Where did it happen? When Jesus, when Jesus was born. When Jesus went where? At the wedding. At the wedding. What did he turn, what did he, how did he make the wine? With his power. Out of what did he make the wine? Water. That's right. Now, when Jesus made the water into wine at the wedding, that's the story. What do we learn from that story? We learned the more wine we get, the better the wedding is. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. aye. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to try to give you a very quick summary of a pretty comprehensive amount of research. Um, we've looked at a couple different things. We've looked at these highest performing schools. We were asked to go out and try to find the 25 most rapidly improving elementary, 25 most rapidly improving middle, and 25 most rapidly improving high schools in the country. Uh, and by the way, I said rapidly improving, not highest performing. These are schools that year after year are making substantial improvement. And that's pretty good company because there's 47,000 school buildings in the country. We looked at them, but we also didn't look at simply what we were finding in these schools. We looked at the hard research. And there's an awful, awful lot of research out there about American education. Uh, we looked at what is effective. In fact, the, and I'm, forgive me, I know we have some university professors in the audience, okay? Every university professor has done a research study on American education. Every foundation has. Uh, you name it, there, there are more studies than you can imagine. How many studies do you think that have been done and published since January 1, 2000 on American education, K-12 education? The answer is, 52,637 reports. So tell me what you want a piece of research to say and I'll find the report for you. <laughs> there are so many of them. What they've begun to do is meta-analysis. How many have heard of meta-analysis? Now meta-analysis is simply a research of the research. What an exciting person to be with, okay? <laughs> There are 800 meta-analysis reports that have been done. A guy by the name of John Hattie used the power of technology, and he this past year did a meta-analysis of the 800 meta-analysis. <laughs> we actually used his research and looked at it pretty carefully. And what we found, it was very consistent with what we found in the nation's highest performing schools. A similar amount of research has been done in uh, Great Britain by the Sutton Trust Fund. As we looked at the nation's uh, the research, we then compared the research to our model schools. We looked at the structure that these schools had in place. We looked at their best practices. And what we have done is just made a series of recommendations to various groups, action plans. The one place I think we probably have had the greatest impact is on the Common Core State Standards, the Next Generation Assessments, and teacher evaluation based upon student performance. If you read any of the materials, this is the primary research they have used to set those standards, to reconfigure the new test, and to drive this concept about teacher evaluation based upon student performance.